Why do you follow God? What is your motivation? Some people choose to follow God because it makes them feel better. Some do so because they think it will make their lives better in several ways. And others follow God because simply this was the way they were raised. But what is the ideal motivation for following our God? For absolute and steadfast obedience to God, the ideal motivation is we follow Him because He is the Savior of the world. Through faith, He came to call us to Himself and welcomed us to live in oneness with Him. At some time in our lives, we find ourselves on a path that we would have never chosen, the path with undesirable roots, unforeseen curves, unlit corners, and life-changing directions. Once on that path, we are always confronted with a choice, a choice to desperately look for a way out or a choice to follow God's path for us. What will you take? Are you going to learn on your own, understanding and take control? Or are you going to trust your faith in God and let him lead? There are characters and stories in the Bible that have shown faith in God and trust in the path that he has chosen. The story of Mary, where she was about to marry Joseph, but God chose a different path for her. God wanted her to remain a virgin in order to give birth to Jesus. The story of Abraham, wherein he left his place and his people and walked in God's way, even though he was unsure where he was going. He was even ready to sacrifice his only child because he believed in God's promise that he would give them a child. God blessed and saved Abraham in every situation of his life because of his trust. The story of Noah, where he builds an ark. God spoke to Noah about the wickedness on earth. People neither believed in God nor Noah, but continued to spread wickedness and commit sins. Noah could have turned down God's word for that matter, but he did not. He believed in God and started doing the work that was given to him. He had trust in the Almighty and walked in his path. The story of Simon where he was fishing worked all night and caught nothing. But God said to him, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon hesitated at first, but he still followed God and ended up catching a great multitude of fishes. These are only a handful of numerous stories in the Bible that show a point that wherever God leads, you should follow with full faith. God sometimes leads us in strange directions he tells us to make a change in our lives, to challenge those around us, to be called in a certain place, or make a certain decision that we wouldn't typically make on our own. When he commands us to do those things, our normal response is fear and doubt. But remember what God says in Isaiah 41.10, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with the righteous right hand. If you choose to live within the confines of God's commands, you will experience life as God's intended it for you to have. Trust that God will lead you step by step to glory. He will never stop guiding you for God is our God forever. He will be your guide even unto death. Faith is defined as belief with strong conviction firm belief in something for which there may be no tangible proof, complete trust, confidence, reliance, or devotion. Faith is the opposite of doubt. Living in faith means doing and saying what you believe is right without a doubt. As Christians, we all have faith to some degree, and we believe that God is leading our path. We consider ourselves as faithful followers of God, Every person in this world can say, I have faith, I believe in Jesus. However, one thing we often miss is that applying faith to one's life challenges is a completely different matter. Each of us is given a measure of faith. When circumstances happen and seem that you're walking through the dark path, how does your faith respond? In such situations, most of us would call on God and question him, like, why does this happen to me? Or be impatient to ask him, why do you keep making me wait? The story of Abraham and Sarah in Hebrews 11 shows how God keeps his promises, even when it seems impossible. God told the couple that Sarah will be the mother of the nation and will bear a child. 
This is given the fact that Sarah was barren and her womb was considered dead. Despite this, Abraham trusted God and believed in his promise. After many years of waiting and tests of faith, Sarah gave birth to her son at the age of 90. Abraham considered not what looked dead. He wasn't moved by what he saw as impossible. God leads you to the path that will make your faith grow. He is using the obstacles to change you. If he removed the obstacles sooner, you wouldn't be prepared. Obstacles are part of the path he wants you to travel. These may put you in situations that look like they'll never work out. The question is, are you going to quit because you're not seeing things happening? Do what Abraham does. Don't consider your circumstances. Consider your God. Instead of considering how big your obstacles are, start considering how big your God is. You may think that it's too late or you're too old. You can have thousands of reasons why things are not going to work out. But your faith should tell you that what God spoke to you is on the way. When you're following the path God leads you to, stay in faith and things will switch in your favor. Just because you don't see anything happening doesn't mean God is not working. Behind the scenes, things are changing. We can't see him arranging goods for us. We can't see him putting the promotion for us. We can't see him preparing other people that are part of our progress. You may not see anything happening now, but don't be moved by what you see. Be moved by what God wants you to believe. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. If you are a faithful follower of God, you'll have an inner understanding that the thing you're hoping for is certainly established even before you see any material evidence. When it seems like there's no light in the dark path you're traveling, walk by faith and not by sight. Fix your eyes on God while traveling his path. He prepared it just for you. Keep in mind that when God is all you have, you have what you only need. Many believe in God, but belief is not enough. Faith is how you act, not just how you believe. It is seeing beyond what the eyes can reach. It is putting the blinders off and still knowing what to focus on. It is listening not just with the ears, but with an open heart. It is stepping both feet firmly on the ground and forging ahead to an unfamiliar sound. It is accepting what is and surrendering what will be. To have faith is to trust in the unknown, and it is a decision you make every waking moment of your life. When we are clouded with fear, we fail to look at our situations through God's lenses. We forget that we have the power to rise above and beyond all circumstances. And when we experience failure, we feel abandoned and forgotten. We drown ourselves in the misery we created. Some even say they have faith, and yet they shut their eyes. They walk blindly in life hoping to stumble upon mounds of treasure. That's a mere wish, not faith. True faith is not just about affirmations or beliefs, it's also about actions, and faith and actions come with trust. When we decide to trust God, we can see His goodness in every season of our lives. We can sleep well at night knowing that God will provide for our needs. When we trust Him, we see failure or delay as the change we need. That if we keep on being open and keep doing what is right, it is a beautiful new door, a new beginning in our lives. Matthew 21, 2, Jesus says, And whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. When you pray and seek for what you need, sow and surrender. Sometimes we insist so much on one thing, thinking that it is the best for us, but God's plan is better than ours. God's plan is bigger. You are on the right path God has prepared for you. You can get lost, but you will always be found. Although the truth is you are never lost. You might feel you are, but you are where you are supposed to be. Remember, rejections are God's redirection. Our faith needs persistence, but it also needs flexibility. And as you go through the years of following the Lord, you'll be able to discern when to persist and when to be flexible. A persistent faith 
does not give up and a flexible faith does not break no matter what happens. As God reaches for you today, welcome Him and let His power flow into your life. Let God lead the way. Choose to trust Him more during those times when you fall behind, when you fail, when you are challenged, or when you feel defeated. Trust His ways, His abundant plans. Surrender everything to Him. Hold on to the truth that you are His child and that the trials you face are nothing compared to His plans that are about to unfold in your life. With the eyes of faith and a trusting heart, come before the Lord and surrender your desires, your prayers, your life into His mighty hands. Our God is a gracious God. He is our loving Father. God has given you a mission only you can fulfill. He equipped you and He placed you right where you should be. Wherever you are, let God use you to be a channel of His love. Let His will be done, so have faith and follow Him in all the days of your life.